Live Radio. This episode, Missy and I are talking about forgiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome to another episode of On Finding Peace, and this is the podcast where Missy and I talk about practical, everyday life tips that can help us find our inner peace, and uh, today we're looking at forgiveness and what that means in our lives and how that can lead us toward our inner peace and how we can do that. So... How are you doing, Missy? I know it's here, not outside, like, typically. No, it's too hot. It's really too hot out there, and I've got the giggles today, so you're going to have to forgive me. I'm, <laughs> we're just, uh, and it's a welcome break to the day to be doing this, and um, and it was too hot outside, so I decided to opt for AC, and um, yeah, so I'm super excited about, about today's conversation. How about you, Chris? How you been? I've been doing well. Uh doing my normal work stuff and um, I'm actually inside for the opposite reason. Uh, it is quite cold and winds in the teens. So uh, <laughs> so I went in into the building for the heat. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's interesting how weather is so different from one locale to another. And it's May, and it's still not warmed up there. It's crazy. I know. I, I, I actually, I, I have what's called my shed office, which is what I'm in, and I clean it up for the summer. You know, get all my office stuff out so we can use it as a actual tool shed and a working shed. And I can't remember the last time that I kept the shed going uh, through May. Wow, it, it's just yeah. weird. I tried well, to take yeah. it apart a few days ago, and, and then it got cold again. I had to put it back together. <laughs> um, you know, having not been in that area, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm from where Chris lives, and that's how we know each other. Um, and, gosh, I can't remember. Like, it was always mid-May, you know, early May, getting warmer. So it's crazy that it's still cold there. Um, yeah. And then I hear I have friends in Colorado who are like, it's been nine months of snow. It's crazy. So something hopefully that means we're not having trouble with global warming. <laughs> I mean, yeah, or, I, I don't. That's the perspective I'm going to put on it. <laughs> that, that's the way I look at it, you know, but uh, on the bigger scope, I, I figure the climate's going to do what the climate's going to do. And yeah, I, I don't know. I, that, that will be another topic for another podcast. Yeah, exactly. Another yeah. issue on another. <laughs> but um, <laughs> although maybe we could talk one day about weather and how it affects people's emotions Ooh. and mental state, because that good. that actually is a thing. You know, like it the really seasonal affective thing. disorder, yeah. and um, you know how people's uh, depressive states increase in certain um, seasons and. So, yeah, yeah, I have quite that, a few family members who have, who have experienced that. So, yeah, I agree. Well, so so let me ask you this on today's topic. What what would you say that the societal norm is uh, for forgiveness, like the definition of forgiveness? The way society views it, I would think that forgiveness is to move on and forget. Right. So I, I, I perceive that a lot of society feels like somebody has wronged you, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody has wronged me and, and I'm going to let them go or absolve them of that wrongdoing. So that's, that's kind of the way that I, uh, you know, I should say for a long time, I even had it that way. I had it that way in my head that, you know, that's what forgiveness was. And, you know, as of recent, probably within the last two to three years, I've been working on uh, a new implementation of forgiveness for myself. And and I wanted to introduce that to our, our um, listeners because 
forgiveness is really the term is, like you said, giving forth, right? Mm -hmm. But what are we giving forth? We're giving forth something, let's say we have a triggering behavior that gets to us. Like, I don't like when people lie to me, right? That's, that's a triggering behavior for me or has been in my life. And so I must be holding guilt for lying previously in my life. And so I need to give that up. I need to give up the guilt from lying because lying has taught me not to lie, right? And so in giving up the guilt, people who lie will no longer trigger me. And, and it actually is very healing for your soul to give that forth and agree, okay, one, I don't like it. I'm, I don't do it anymore. So I'm going to choose not to do it. I'm acknowledging that I've done it before. And I'm acknowledging that there's guilt associated with having done it before. And I might not remember ever having done it, but if it triggers you and it's in your space, then you can guarantee that you've done it before. And yep. so then you give it forth, acknowledging like I'm willing to not be that person who does that anymore. Um, and so that's the giving forth of the behavior so that one, it doesn't trigger you Two, you get rid of the guilt because guilt makes you feel bad. Right. And two, it brings you to or three. It brings you to so much more peace in your life because you're not worried about monitoring what other people are doing, you know, with that triggering behavior, because it's not your stuff anymore. Right. No, and I think that that's very true and something that I would encourage society to change. You know, yeah. my definition was more of the cynical side of where society seems to be trending. Um, yeah. But one of the things that I look at in dealing with forgiveness is trying to remember that the forgiveness is all about the wrong, the person who is, say, the victim. And, and I hate using that word, but mm -hmm. let's just use that's who the forgiveness is really for. Well, when I look at the emotional damage that's done, because I can't control what somebody else does to me, you know, so like you say, lying right. is, is a trigger and whoever may end up lying to you, you can't control their behavior. Sure. And you can't expect them. Well, maybe you could expect them to apologize for lying to you, but, but it's not a guarantee they're going to do it and you can't make them do it. Right. So for me, I look at the forgiveness more so as something that I, as the wronged party, needs to do for myself to be able to move on. That's perfect. I mean, like, really, you just circled up everything that I just said in that statement. I feel like, you know, probably mm -hmm. on a, you know, a more understandable way. <laughs> well, you're you're, you you're know. fine. <laughs> yeah, but, you know... And, and that's it, because it's like, I, I know that people, if, if uh, let's say we all lived in a village and we're drinking from the well, right? And the well's got poison in it. And anybody who drinks from the well is going to get poisoned. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same thing with holding on to uh, th those kind of behaviors that you're triggered by. Um, that's the same kind of guilt. It's poison inside of you. So dis-ease, right? Disease comes from disease in the mind. And Forgiveness is part of that, releasing that disease. And that's how we get to peace. That's how yep. we get to what this podcast is all about. Um, so it's it's a it's a different way to look at things to where you're 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 not only benefiting maybe somebody else because you're like, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna let that go, but you're benefiting yourself most of all, and in turn the way that I feel about things is that we're all one. And so if you're able to forgive it, then that means that you're forgiving it for me as well. And I'm allowed, you know, to, to kind of tap into that energy of forgiveness. Yep. And, and I think a piece that people get stuck on is people don't want to forgive or are holding back on forgiving because they have the assumption that, well, if I forgive, then that means that we're kind of like wiping this away. You know, if, yeah. if I forgive, it means that I, I'm letting that person like get away with, you know, whatever they may have done to me. But that's really not, at least for me, the way that I see what forgiveness is. Because again, right. forgiveness is all about me as the <laughs> wronged person. So for me, it's not about um that i am 
absolving them of their wrong. I'm just saying that I'm going to forgive them for what they've done to me. Now, if there's any negative consequences, punishments, whatever, that still need to come around, or depending, you know, I may move my friendship away from them or, you know, change how that relationship is. So there, there's still these consequences to what they did, but I'm going to move forward in that forgiveness and kind of where you're saying with the guilt, you know, not allow any guilt on my end to linger. I'm not going to allow mm -hmm. negative feelings, emotions, energies stay because of something that they did. You know, that for needs to stay with I, them. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, I have it that men can do that so much easier than women, you know, and <laughs> yeah, I know that I mean, that's just because I believe that it's challenging for me to do that. And when I talk to men about this, it, it literally turns into a, oh, yeah, we just kind of like let it roll off our back and I'm like. How do you do that? You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand how you do that. Um, but so it's like that guilt, though, if you even if you decide, OK, I'm not going to hang out with that person anymore because, you know, that's just not the energy. If you haven't forgiven that guilt for yourself for having done that behavior, because we all go through stages. Right. It's not yeah. it doesn't have to be lying. Maybe it could be cheating or stealing or or even, you know, worse things. Right. Um, but if we don't forgive ourselves for that guilt, then even if we get rid of that person who triggers that behavior in us or that guilt in us, then a new person is going to pop into your experience to show you that about yourself, right? Because this is how life reflects us. Mm -hmm. And um, because, I mean, I, I have many times thought, okay, I'm giving that up. I'm forgiving it. I see it. I don't want it. I don't want to do it. I'm done. And Spirit's like, no, you're not. You're not done yet. You didn't. This, this is like all lip service that you're just giving me here, mm -hmm. you know. And so, it really does take tapping in and and digging deep because that guilt is is like a magnet, you know. Yep. Whatever it is that you're holding guilt about is going to attract, you know. Let's say it was theft. You stole something from somebody, you know. You know when you were young, whether it was candy from the store or something from a friend, whatever but you're holding guilt from it. So then now all of a sudden in your life, you're having people break into your car or, you know, steal money from you or not pay you back or however it is. Right. Um, without forgiving something like that, then, then you're just going to keep attracting those kind of scenarios to until you work it out until you, sorry, I shouldn't say work. I should say walk it out because mm. work is, it, it involves effort. Right. And, and, walking is easy. So walking it out, we want it all to be easy for us. We want this to be a simple, smooth process. Um, and the more that we make it sound like work, it sounds challenging. It sounds hard and difficult. And it really can be that what what one of my teachers refers to it as is a holy instant where you decide, you know what, I'm giving it all up. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, it's like the water just calmed down. You know, yep. you, you don't have massive waves and, and tidal waves and things like that. You just are, are peaceful looking at a reflection of a lake, you know? Um, because at any time you dwell on, on the negative, you continue the negative. Yeah. You know, so if, if I, I mean, you gave all those great examples of kind of karma, if you want to call it, uh, you know, however, yeah. you know, it comes back on you. And, and even emotionally, that if I'm going to focus on everything that everybody has done to me or how they have wronged me, then I'm going to start seeing everything in the world around me from that negative viewpoint. Mm, yeah. So, you know, when people come to me talking about, you know, I, I don't have happiness or inner peace or whatever they call it, part mm. of it is, you know, what, what are you dragging with you? Yeah. How do you see, you know, the world around you? Because if you're still holding on to some of these areas uh, of needing forgiveness, then you're still going to see the world uh, as this evil place. And, right. and then it does become that, you know, when I mean, sometimes when, you know, clients say, you know, that this is a, a bad world we live in, an evil world we live in, whatever, I'll look at them and say, yeah, you're right. Only because, well, that's their perception. Yeah, that's what you say it is. That's what it is. There's no yeah. arguing, right? And, and it's going to be that way. Now, I usually then turn that around and say, you know, it's interesting because 
assuming neither of us is hallucinating, we're in the same world and I kind of see it as a pretty good place to be in because I know a lot yeah. of good people are doing a lot of great things. Yeah. So again, it, it's we're looking at the same thing, but we're looking at it through that lens. So yeah. as much as we can get rid of that guilt and we can get rid of the forgiveness by again, forgiving without even necessarily having to talk to that person if you don't want to. And forgiving sure. in the sense that it's not absolving them of what they have done. Well, that's their you thing to walk it. out, right? Exactly. That's theirs to walk out. Exactly. And, you know, once we start to recognize that things are happening for us, not to us, right? Because I believe that, you know, when somebody comes into my space like that, that's that they're teaching me about myself, right? With the reflection. And so either I've done it before, I'm currently doing it, or maybe I've done it in a past life and there's still guilt in my spirit that needs to be given forth. And so I'm grateful for those kind of instances. I didn't used to be, I can't tell you, I mean, like how many times, and even still sometimes I'm like, really, I'm still working on that. Like, how did that happen? Like, I thought we were done with this one. But for the most part, it's really, it's like, you really have that gratefulness, like, oh, wow, you're de teaching me what I don't want to do again. I forgot. And so I must have done it. I must be still holding guilt over it. So I get a little bit more work to do. And then I know that. And then, like, they dissipate. Those people cannot be in your space anymore. They just won't show up. Mm -hmm. And so th that's the work that I feel like forgiveness is most beneficial for all of yep. us. So question Okay. How do you do it? How, how do you forgive somebody for them wronging you? So there's a saying in, in the course that I take, and I'm taking a course in miracles for anybody who's interested. And um, I'm, I'm studying with a master teacher, uh, uh, Dr. Carolyn, Carolyn Fuqua. Um, one of the things that she says that, that pulls us with the ability to look at things differently is to be and see only God. So, and th this is not religious to me. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not um, Christian. Um, you know, there's no certain religion based upon this. What I mean is that if God is the ocean, we're all drops in the ocean. We are all the same. So if I'm attacking you, Chris, that means I'm attacking myself. So if I'm uh, irritated by so-and-so who's out there lying to me, then guess what? There's three ping fingers pointing right back at me that are saying, hey, that guilt is about you, not about me. Mm -hmm. So the work is really like, um, I would say the best way that I have been able to do it is let's say this one little, you know, uh, itty bitty lie irritated me. Well, then I'm maybe I told millions of lies. Who knows what I've done in this lifetime, like whether they were small lies or big lies or audacious lies or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make up a story. I'm going to walk myself through this meditation of a story of how I was just, you know, just like the worst liar ever. And I'm going to forgive myself for that. I'm going to let go of that guilt for me. And then if I see it, I don't judge it. There's no more remorse about it. There's no more guilt, no shame. And it doesn't bother me anymore. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, uh, I'm going to bring up this one because I know it's a heated subject for everybody. It's like politicians. <laughs> politicians don't bother me. I, and, and you know, I don't talk politics with people. I You know, there's a lot of heated debate about politics. But they're God walking it out, too. And when you see them like that, that means that they're somewhere on that quadrant. Have we talked about the quadrants of the clock? Mm, I think, I we, think did we did in a time. previous, yeah. Yeah, okay. So basically quadrant one, for those of you who don't know, is where we do everything bad and wrong, right? All the, you know, rape, pillage, shield, murder. Well, quadrant two is where we project all, all of that onto everybody else. Quadrant three is when we figure out that it's all happening for us. And quadrant four is the super qu conscious quadrant where you really are being and seeing only God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're all somewhere in that quadrant. It's not a linear process. We're, we're jumping around. Each and every one of us are jumping around and we're trying to walk it out. We're trying to get back to that super qu conscious quadrant so that we can be at peace. And if yep. that's something that, 
you're aimed to do and you're willing to listen to your inner spirit for help, then you're going to be shown the way of how, you know, it's funny because how used to be a a dominant question in my perspective as well. Mm -hmm. And, but I find that comes from the opposite end of the pole. It comes from the egoic, um, I'm not good enough. We can't, you know, we can't make this happen. It's too hard. It's too tough. And that doesn't feel good to me. So I've learned to practice standing on the left side of the pole where spirit is leading me and I hear it and I go like, oh, this will help me forgive that or or being happy is just a state of being just as much as being sad. So what do I want to put my energy towards? Mm -hmm. Right. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know necessarily how it's going to be for you or any of our listeners, but I do know that that it's possible. Yeah, definitely possible and and something that needs to be worked on. Um, and for me, the the way that I look at it is um, in in somewhat of a similar way that you know I turn to my God and realize that my God forgives and does so out of love. So mm-hmm. I need to do the same thing. Yeah. Now I'm not going to do it as well as God does because I'm not He's God. God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, exactly. But I'm, I'm going to give it my best shot to not only forgive, but then to move forward. And it's not a forgive and forget. You know, I, I always talk to my clients when we're dealing with uh, past issues or traumas. We don't want to forget or minimize or twist the of stories course. because yeah. the, those are different um, denial patterns, which move back into psychological issues. Mm hmm. So we need to acknowledge in in, in as fully as we can what happened in the past. So if I'm wronged, you know, I'm still going to acknowledge that I'm wronged, but I'm not living in that. That's not affecting my present emotional state. It's just something in my history that I can pull from if I need to, but it's not bothering me at the moment. So I want to share something. This was really cool. Um, And it it goes along with what you were just saying. Um, I was watching a show. um, I believe it's called um, I Was Prey or something like that. Right. So where all these people are out in the wilderness and they get attacked by animals. Mm -hmm. And um, this one young lady, uh, this episode, she was a five year old little girl. They lived out on a farm in Texas. You know, um, she was out there. Her dogs were out. They were tied up to a tree or something. And she went out and her family was not really anywhere to be like in the instant vicinity. Well, she heard something. And then all of a sudden a panther, which are are apparently not uh, well known in that area. Right. To, to have panthers in that area jumps out and, and is mutilating this young young lady, five years old. Long story short, the dogs, you know, get loose. She's saved. Panthers were her favorite animal, right, before this occurred. Mm-hmm. And while they were interviewing her, who she's now a, a fully grown adult, beautiful young lady, um, was also still her favorite animal. Like, she didn't give that up. Like, there's there's so much strength in beauty mm-hmm. and just that knowledge. Like, like wow, that's a possibility, for people. Right. And so it kind of goes along with what you're saying. You don't, you don't have to forget. It's a great um, story. Right. And yep. not, she didn't minimize it. She didn't, but she, she still loves, right. That's what it boils down to is she still loves those kinds of animals. Like she doesn't have any kind of, um, um, what's the word I want to use, Chris? Animus. <laughs> Yeah, may, animosity towards them Maybe. or or anything like that. Yeah, uh, there was a there's a different word, but anyway, um, I just think that's that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And and if that's something that we could all embody, right? It's like taking your favorite person, right? Your favorite person in the whole wide world, and seeing how love, you know, all the love and light that they offer in your world, and then taking that energy and that wonderful, beautiful energy and placing it on the person who you least like, who, who triggers you the most, right? 
that's being and seeing only God. That's taking the the inf- information that you have about somebody that you really feel joyful mm-hmm. about and putting it on somebody that you don't feel as joyful about. And I guarantee you the picture of the person you don't feel joyful about will change. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just a process and we're all we're all walking through it. Yep. Uh, I totally agree. And and once you can learn to do it, I was just going to say master it, but I don't know if that's becoming too godlike. <laughs> so the more you do it, yeah. the more at peace you will find yourself, you know, because yeah. you're you're not dragging anything along with you. Um, yeah. And and I think that, you know, becomes a difference that we learn a life lesson. We learn how to, um, you know, become a little bit better ourselves and we let that stay where it belongs, you know, in, yeah. in the past, not in the present in the past. Yeah. and, you know, move, move forward. Well, what, Which I guess now, saying? go ahead. I was going to say that this may not be an exciting one, but that could be our listener challenge. Oh, yeah. Let's hear it. Well, I'm just thinking just in, in general, so how do people do it? You know, like the question I asked mm-hmm. you, you know, uh, how do you forgive and, uh, you know, kind of let that go? Um, yeah. You know, it's not maybe like with some of our other challenges, but if, That's you know, good. People, it's food for thought, right? You're planting the yeah. seed. And, and, and if and you can share with will. us, then, you know, people yeah. can learn, you know, what, what do people do to uh, continue to move on with their lives when, you know, they're wronged when. That's it. It's not a one size fits all. Well, I mean, we all no. know that already, but, you know, that's why there's so many different teachers in this world that teach so many different methods. And everybody's like, well, which one works? Well, it depends on you. It depends on what you can embody, what you can embrace, what what you resonate with. And, you know, our listeners, I, I think that's a great challenge. You know, write in and tell us how you forgive. Tell us what's the best way that you found to yep. to do that for yourself, because maybe we can share it. Maybe we can make a blog post on, on mine and Chris's site to share the way that forgiveness has worked for many of our listeners. That'd be amazing. Yep. Totally agree. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thanks for your time today, Chris. And yours as well. And uh, I don't know if I envy the heat that you have or not. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I definitely don't envy the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't. I I, yeah, I yeah. do. I, I'm enjoying sitting by the heater and, you know, but yeah. most people don't. So, <laughs> all right. So, well, so where the, will the beard go after the cold is gone? I mean, even a little or no, nope, stays year round, huh? Yeah. <laughs> actually, as, as a bit of trivia, the beard has been around consistently with never disappearing since the wonderful year of 1989. Wow, that's a long time. So does, it just gets trimmed up every now and then, it huh? It's trimmed up. It gets yeah. longer and then trimmed up. And the mustache <laughs> made its appearance in 1986. Oh boy, so you went three years with only a mustache? Did you rock it like Sam Elliott does? Oh, you know, of course. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So I'm, I'm on a streak. I can't. I can't get rid of the beard for a summer now. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> well, thank you guys, everybody, for listening at home. Chris and I really appreciate you. Yep, and uh, you know, if you like the content here, please share. Uh, you know, hit the like button and share this content, and uh, let your friends know. Um, also, let us know of any topics that you want to hear us talk about. And Absolutely. if you want to support the podcast, uh, you can buy us a cup of coffee um, and uh, you'll get some merchandise and goodies and gifts and all that stuff if you support us. So nice. please do. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Chris. All right. Thank you.